What's going on guys, Vic Almighty here. Welcome back to the channel for this special episode to recap 2021. This year's quickly coming to an end, and I gotta say, this year 2021 has been by far my favorite year. So many awesome projects that I've been a part of with a lot of talented artists. Not only that, behind the scenes with the Rejuvenate production team, it has scaled up quite a bit since we first started six years ago. We're going into year seven and that just blows my mind. With that being said, let's go over my top 10 projects of 2021. One of my favorite things I got to do this year was check out Chicago for my first time ever. The food was amazing, the sites were great, got to hang out with the boss man for a few days, we shot some ads for Snapchat, Facebook, stuff that you might have seen at some point. After that we checked out Jake Collector's store at Restock Chicago, real dope place if you're ever in the area. We hung out there for a while, then he took us on a grand tour of his private collection. It is literally insane, he has a whole apartment dedicated to his collection and his sneakers. From top to bottom he has off-white Jordan 1s, Travis Scott's, Yeezys, Nikes, all that hype stuff. At the end of it, it was real cool, I got to go home with 14 pairs of shoes to restore and customize for him. These are some of them, the Dorenbacker 4s, the Solars, the Wu-Tang Dunk Customs that I did, the Travis Scott Restoration, these Red Octobers that I got back to 20K, and these Travis Scotts. This was one of my favorite projects from the lot using the shaving cream technique. I love how the green turned out with the purple laces. I am gonna go back to Chicago in a few months to deliver all these shoes. I just don't trust shipping some $20,000 Red Octobers in the mail and hoping he gets some. So I'm just gonna hand deliver them myself. Hopefully he likes what I've done. On to number nine, the 1988 Fragment Jordan 3. I took inspiration from two great artists, Jay from Dane Customs and Chef Hoi Lee. What Dane Customs did, he added a swoosh to his Fragment Custom. I love that detail, I had to do it to mine, it gave it that Tinker Hatfield look. And what Chef Hoi Lee did, he added the blue to the side, something that Jordan Brand should have done from the beginning for some reason, I don't know why they didn't and aged the back tab. This was the first time ever I used a coffee method technique. We grabbed a big tank of water, filled it up with coffee, let these shoes sit inside for about 24 hours, let it marinate. Once we took them out, it gave it that aged cream look. After that, we gave it some more details. The back tab is gonna age no matter what, so we sped up the process and added some more yellowing. Gave it some Fox Shaw Uniform oatmeal laces and aged up the sole. It's funny, I put electronics in sneakers, built shoes from scratch, but for some reason, these are Connor Kenrick, our videographer over there's favorite customs that I've done this year. Let me know if you guys agree with him. I almost didn't even put these on the list. Regardless, these are sick and I'm glad I have them in my collection. One of the coolest things about my job is I get to connect with a lot of awesome people in the industry. One of my favorite sneaker brands of all time, Box Shot Uniform. What they did is change the shoelace game forever. They recreated the original 1985 Jordan 1 lace with the perfect knit pattern, perfect thickness, and spot on colors. That is not easy to do. Ever since then, he's grown the line, introduced a bunch of different markers to age your sneakers, and also brought us tongue labels. Ever since I connected with Fox, I've gone crazy with the customs. All of these were originally inspired by Fox. I just had to create them for myself, for my personal collection. These would not be possible without Fox's accessories, starting with the Wu-Tang Dunks. Originally, they created a high top dunk version, but the low top, in my opinion, is so much cleaner. He provided the laces and tags. I just added my own flair by laser engraving the Wu-Tang logo. Then over here, we got these Apple Customs that I recently did. These are low-key one of my favorites, just because I can wear these every single day. The Apple tongue tag and the side, the thing different, all of that just screams casual clean. Now we're on to some Jordan samples. These are inspired by the 1991 Rare Carmine sample with the 23 on the side. We went ahead and ended that on the side and aged the midsole and sole. I love the look of these because they look like they're ready to crumble, except they're not. These got at least another 20 to 30 years of life in them. And over here, we got the Rare 1995 sample that never actually released, these Fire Red 5s. The difference is, it has the 23 on the side. I didn't do these on camera just because they were too simple in my opinion. I don't think it was enough to show, but I did add the 23. I did ask you up the midsole and age the sole to give it that look. Another honorable mention that is not on the table just because I'm wearing them is these X-Men Wolverine Michigan Dunks. Again, I didn't do these on camera because they were too simple, but they did come out real dope. There's a couple details that I did add to the Michigan base. The first one being the X-Men 1990s cartoon logo. I love that cartoon growing up. The theme song, all of the above. That was one of my favorite cartoons. I love the base shoe for it. It's a perfect colorway, the blue and the yellow. And then on the side, I laser engraved Wolverine slash marks and then I painted them silver. It's a real clean detail because it looks like a little mini Wolverine came and slashed my shoe. And lastly, my favorite from the lot is these Kentucky Wildcat Dunk Highs. These came out real clean. My favorite details is the Wildcat tongue labels and the cast in the back. These are actually from Devin Booker, the big old size 14. I did make myself a personal pair, but those are at home. They will be delivered to Devin Booker in the next week. I'm hoping he's gonna rock these because he's always repping Kentucky gear. 
These customs wouldn't be possible without Foxtrot Uniform. I can't wait to show you guys what we have in store for 2022. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, 2021 has been a great year for me because I've been able to do a lot of innovative projects that's never been done in the past on YouTube, but I still enjoy doing the simpler Jordan restorations, such as the restoration on these early 2000 Concord 11s. I know you guys like these type of videos because you're able to learn new techniques from me on how to restore your beaters into heaters, but on this one, I was a student myself. I was able to bring my good friend Sal to teach me how to properly restore a Jordan 11 by regluing the sole and the upper. After sitting down and learning from Sal, I'm not scared to touch a Jordan 11 anymore. I know the proper way on regluing that shoe. I also went ahead and removed the yellowing from the soles. These were super cooked. We went ahead and used Salon Care 40 back in the day. Now if I would have used Rejuvenate Soul Revive, this project would have been done a lot faster. This has been one of my favorite restorations this year because it's a clear day and night restoration and I learned something new and that's what it's all about. The Bedazzle Swarovski Bread and Royal Jordan 1 Custom. This was a fun, unique project. I got the opportunity to work with a local artist named Good Vibe Gliders. If you guys ever meet him in person, he's one of the happiest, jolliest, most positive people you will ever meet. This was a fun project, but it was a big pain in the ass. On camera, this took about 10 minutes to do, but in real time, this was about two weeks worth of work. Laying down rock by rock by rock was fun at first, but after a while, it gets repetitive. Your brain starts seeing all these weird patterns. That's why you gotta take several different breaks. Again, it took us about two weeks to do. This is one of those shoes that will be worn one day. I just hate it because they look so good on my display. They just pop all around. Good Vibe Gliders definitely did its thing on these. I learned something new from these as well. It's just one of those things I definitely probably won't do again because it took so long. Each shoe has about 3,000 gems. That's what makes these so beautiful. Working with Goodbye Gliders for those two weeks was a blast, and now he's one of the new homies. He comes around the office all the time, bugs everybody out in the office, and occasionally helps me with my projects. If I ever have to do this again, it's going straight to Gabe. On to number five, the Travis Scott Jordan 1 Low Recon Build. This is a custom that I created with Tyler from Laced Up Customs, and I gotta say, after doing this project, it took me from right here to over here. This is one of those projects that opened up so many doors for me. It's allowed me to enter the recon world. I now understand leathers, how to cut leather, how to sky leather, how to put it together, how to use a sewing machine. So many details that go into making a pair of sneakers. And again, I'm just getting started. There is so much more to learn, but this right here was a good starting point for me to understand how to put a shoe together. I also really enjoy designing the shoe. I got a chance to sit down with Steve and Julian to map out exactly what we wanted to do with the shoe as far as colors and materials. It felt like a scene out of American Chopper or West Coast Customs where they're sitting down and mapping out the project. Working on the shoe with Tyler was pivotal in my career and I wanna thank him for teaching me the ways. Now let's get into the future of sneakers. I had the pleasure of working with Electro Kicks to create three different groundbreaking customs. Starting with these Adapt Yeezy 700 V2s that are self-lacing. These are insane. We literally grabbed the mechanism from a Nike Adapt and swapped it onto a Yeezy 700. Basically, the mechanisms is inside this thick midsole. The battery, everything that you need to make the shoe auto lace is inside of there. It's pretty nuts. We did such a great job of making this shoe look factory. You don't feel anything when I'm wearing them. You don't feel the big, thick battery underneath. The auto lacing works perfectly. We hid the tubes inside perfectly where you can't see any of this. I keep on saying perfectly, I keep on saying factory, but it's true. This shoe literally came out so good where you can't even tell we did any custom work. It's insane that you can put on a pair of Yeezys and it just auto laces by itself. Another cool thing about this custom is we had to use the original lacing from the mechanism itself. We couldn't replace that. So when I went ahead and picked out the shoe for this custom, I made sure it matched the gray perfectly with the lace tracks and the shoe lace. Speaking about Back to the Future, we also created these Air Mag Air Max 90s. These came out so clean, starting from the paint job, the technology, all of it. We started by adding this Nike EL panel onto the tongue. The wire flows through the shoe inside to this back heel piece where the battery is located. Once it dies, you can charge it right here through this little slot. When I want to turn it on, simply click the button. I love that. I'm never going to get bored of that. So everything turns on all at once. You got the Nike EO panel over here, lights inside the air unit, and on the side right here. These came out so clean. Electro Kicks did such an amazing job putting it together. I was just helping out. The motherboard also required programming. It's crazy. When we were working on these shoes, Halfway through the shoe, one of the motherboards wasn't fully programmed right. It was such a pain. We had to go to Walmart, get some tech, hit up his boy, get it going. We had to hook it up to the computer. It was such a pain. Eventually, we got it working and we were able to complete the project. These came out so clean. Again, they're stored over there on display. I don't think I'll ever get rid of these just because I love Back to the Future. I love how they turned out. They're real clean and I simply enjoy this video with Electro Kicks. 
we're forgetting one more custom that him and I created, the Tesla Air Force One Custom. Pretty much everything you see right here, we did on that one Air Force One. We added auto lacing technology, we added EL wires to the swooshes, we added an EL panel on the tongue itself. We did a lot of work to that shoe. Basically, the entire sole was filled with technology. Honestly, the shoe probably isn't even fully wearable. It's heavy, it's clunky, but we wanted to do something that's never really been done before, including all those different elements into one single shoe. I don't have it here with me. I had to send it back to Electro Kick so he could touch it up. We're getting close to that number one, you guys. Next up is the Phoenix Suns Projects. You guys already know I'm a diehard Suns fan, so of course I had to start off the year with the Phoenix Suns Project. This took forever. It took a lot longer than I expected. I didn't even do both shoes. I only did one and it took me like about a week of time to do this. I started off this project by taking full inspiration from the new Valley jerseys that the Phoenix Suns be rocking. I gotta say, those are the hardest jerseys in the entire NBA. We started off by getting the classic Phoenix Sunset across the Camelback Mountain, added all the names on both sides, starting with the starting lineup. And over here, we got the bench, classic Phoenix Suns logo, the Valley, all those details came out real clean, you guys. Again, this custom took way longer than it should have. I'm just really happy with how it turned out. Later on in that year, the Phoenix Suns, they grinned the season. They made it to the playoffs, made it to the finals, came really close, but lost to the Bucks, unfortunately. During that time, I made Devin Booker a pair of Phoenix Suns customs using his size 14 on a pair of Kobe's. He loves Kobe's, so I had to go ahead and add the beautiful sunset across the entire shoe. Added some small Phoenix Suns elements. My favorite detail and one that I know he's gonna appreciate is the Be Legendary stencil on the side of the shoe. Of course, I'm sure you guys are wondering, if these are for Devin Booker, then why do you still have them? Trust me, you guys, I'm working on getting these into his hands. Next week, fingers crossed, I should be going to the facility to drop these off along with the Kentucky Dunks. While I'm there, I'm also gonna be dropping off full customs for the entire Phoenix Sun squad, you guys. This is a dream come true. I've been working on these for the last few months and honestly, it's a lot more work than I thought. Usually I'm used to doing, you know, one pair at a time, but this time I had to do 15 different ones. And not only that, usually I'm working on size nine, size 10 shoes. These are all ranging from size 12 to 19. The 19 size shoes, they're enormous, you guys. Even on Nike.com, they stop at size 18. For these two, I had to go on eBay and find a special seller that sell the bigger shoes. A lot of thought went into the design process of this sneaker. I wanted to keep it simple, but still give it loud elements to where the players still think it's dope. In a perfect world, I would have recreated the sneaker 15 times for 15 different pairs. The thing is, this took me about a week just to do one shoe. It would simply be impossible, but with what I've done so far, I'm happy and I know they're gonna love it. I've done some big elements and small Easter eggs around the shoe. You're just gonna have to see once the video comes out. On to number two, you guys. This one was a close runner up. We got the custom 1985 Bread Jordan 1 Recon build with my boy, Max. This custom blows my mind, because before we started this project, he's only been at it for one year, and since then, he's perfected the 1985 Jordan 1 build. This shoe isn't like your regular Jordan 1. There's a lot of details that make a 1985 Jordan 1 a 1985 Jordan 1. For example, on the 85s, they use different materials that are very different from what they use today, starting with the leather. For the leather, it's more thicker and more quality. We replicated that using veg tan leather from Tannies. The swooshes are made from vinyl. We replicated that perfectly. Same thing with the sock liners. Basically everything on this shoe, we did as close as possible to the original 85 shoe. The shape, all those details really matter. Again, it's crazy to me to see this pile of leather and these donor soles. After a couple days worth of work, we turned this into that but it did not come easy. On video, it was a good 30 minute video. In real life, this was about two and a half days and those were two and a half stressful days. I underplayed this project. I should have given us five days to do the project from beginning to end, but honestly, two and a half days was simply not enough, but we made it happen. Right over there, Max was knocked out at two in the morning. I had to slap some water on him, slap him a couple times to wake up to get back to work, cause these are for me and of course, anything that's Rick Almighty, they gotta be perfect. And for my favorite project of 2021, the restoration of these original 1988 Black Cement 3s autographed by the GOAT himself, Michael Jordan. When these first got dropped off at Mini Worlds, I thought they were gonna be some boring 2011 retros, but once I opened up the box, I realized they were some original 88 Black Cements. My mind was blown away. They were completely destroyed, but I knew they could be brought back to life. The first person that came to mind to help me with this project was Who Fresh. I called him up and he was completely down for this project. He flew in from California to help me get to work on these. Originally we planned for five days, but once we got to work, we realized it was a lot more work than we anticipated. The tongues by far was the most time consuming part of this whole project. Again, we wanted to keep as much parts of this shoe original as possible, so it started with the tongues. There were some pretty big holes on the side. We filled it, we sanded it, we filled it and sanded it until it was fully smooth. 
and we still had to go in and re-embroider the jump end on the tongue. Like I mentioned, I wanted to keep the shoe as original as possible, so the leather on the shoe, the elephant print, the plastic hardware, all of that stuff is original. The things that had to be replaced was stuff that was inevitable, for example, the midsole. The midsole on the original were complete dust. There's no way you can fix that. Same thing with the back tabs, you can't fix that. There was missing chunks. The sole, there was no grip at all. Everything else is original, you guys. The black leather, the elephant print, the autograph is still there. That's a big thing. I realized in the comment section that the people cannot see the autograph. I did not touch that. I did not repaint that. It's still right there, 100%. But I gotta say, my favorite part about this entire restoration is the overall build of it. Again, we took the shoe apart into small little pieces. Once we put it back together, it still had that 88 original look to it. That was our biggest concern, that once we put it back together, it was gonna look kinda wonky and just the shape was gonna be off. Luckily, that did not happen. This was an awesome project, not just because of how they turned out, but it was a great opportunity to work with Hoofresh. Solomon is one of the most talented people in the industry, so getting a chance to work with him for seven days straight and just picking his brain about the craft was everything. And not only that, it was a great time just goofing off on and off camera. Let me know down in the comments what was your favorite project of 2021. This is Vic Almighty, I'll catch you guys next year.